Hello guys, today I just want to bring you guys some SAT tips, specifically on the math section. So first I'm just going to tell you guys some information about the test. So there are two sections on this test, there's a non-calculator portion and a calculator portion. On the non-calculator portion, you're going to have to do 20 questions in 25 minutes, and on the calculator portion, you're going to have to do 38 questions in 55 minutes. Now I've put approximately the time you get per question um, on these sections. So be sure to keep these in mind and save these values so that you can use it when you're practicing. So this test focuses on four main categories, the heart of algebra, problem solving and data analysis, passport to advanced math, and additional topics in math. So uh, these are all just really um, you know, made up terms to basically summarize algebra one, algebra two, geometry with a little bit of trig. So that's really all you're gonna be tested on. And uh, if you want to know, more information about any of these four specifically then you can go on College Board's website and look them up to get a much more detailed response. So the first uh, real step I have you guys to do um, is to take a diagnostic test. Now I don't want you guys to take this diagnostic test like a typical diagnostic test where you just take it um, you know with the full time requirement full test one setting that's it. I actually want you guys to break it up into tiny pieces don't take the test all at once and actually do around five to ten questions at a time and then immediately check them before you move on. Now this method um, you know, gives you instant improvement in your test taking skills um, as, well as, as well as your knowledge because you will already start to see mistakes before even completing the rest of the test. So this method uh, gives you improvement at a faster rate and you should still time these questions you know even though you're breaking up this you know big test in the tiny sections definitely still time these questions and you will do that based on the values I gave you earlier so I want you guys to prepare and then practice and what I mean by this is that practicing doesn't uh, you know prepare you for the actual exam preparing is uh, reading from a book and then working through the examples so um, for, uh, on any of the questions that you missed on the diagnostic, hopefully you were able to categorize them in which category you missed them in, and then based on that category, uh, you can now go back to your Algebra 1, 2, and Geometry textbooks and essentially relearn those lessons and definitely take notes as you prepare. So once you've prepared, then you're ready to practice. Right, so preparing is relearning that lost material, and then practicing is putting it to use and seeing if you can do it in a test environment. So, uh, the number one resource I'd recommend for practice, which is free, by the way, is using Khan Academy. So Khan Academy has uh, several thousands of uh, practical questions for the SAT math section specifically, and you can practice key areas in those four target areas. So, um, one thing to note is that when you're practicing, Analyze your mistakes critically. For every mistake you make, try to jot down why you got it wrong and what category it is from. Doing this will help you uh, not miss it in the future and definitely uh, try to uh, not miss similar questions. So what you want to do is after you miss a question like this, study similar questions for the type of question that you miss before you go back and practice. And this allows you to really you know, firmly grasp the concepts that you've missed and um, enable you not to miss them in the future. So the next tip I have for you guys is to use your calculator. Be familiar with the basic functions of a calculator, such as solving, um, you know, quadratic equations or graphing, uh, you know, any sort of polynomial. And also, you can add programs to your calculator, like a distance formula or a graphing conic sections, to basically help you solve uh, specific questions faster. Now, if you don't know how to add programs or formulas into your calculator, I have a separate video for that, which you can find in the description down below. Finally, uh, continue taking official practice tests and time yourself using a repeating alarm. And what I mean by this is that this repeating alarm will basically go off every interval of um, the amount of time you get per second. So if you had 10 seconds to do every question, uh, this alarm goes off every 10 seconds. Now, how is this more effective than just one alarm going for the entire thing, you know, and beeping at the end? Well, this actually keeps you on track, right? It's almost like um, 
a coach blowing a whistle to keep the players uh, continuing the game. And I've actually made my own iOS app to help you do this, and it's available for free on the App Store. It goes by the name of Timeminder, and I also have an additional video explaining that, which will also be linked in the description. So definitely use this free iOS app to keep your pace going if you tend to get stuck. It, you know, if you have the problem of time management on these tests, which a lot of new people, uh, you know, tend to have, then basically you can use this app to keep your pace and uh, enable you to keep on going from a test, reminding you, you know, it's time to move on from this question. So it gives you a good feeling for the actual test day. For some general tips for word problems, try to convert the words into equations or variables into basically something that's mathematical in nature rather than the words. This will help you put a word problem into context. Usually every question on the math section has a simple explanation. Okay, so basically what I mean by this is that there is almost no question on the SAT math section that is very complex or should take over, you know, a minute or two to solve. Um, most of the questions can also be done without a calculator, uh, also implying that every question you know really has some kind of simple explanation or shortcut. So if you get stuck, remember that there's, you know, the question has to be simple ultimately because it's a SAT math question, um, and then try to find the solution. For algebra problems, you should tend to uh, show your work even when completing simple problems in order to avoid simple mistakes. And then for problems that have functions, try actually plugging in the answer choices first and this method is called back solving so basically if you plug in the answer choice and it ends up you know an equation ends up being equal on both sides then essentially you've gotten the right answer without really doing any work so you've back solved towards the answer finally the last tip i have is that whenever you don't know some of the material never try to just learn how it applies to one question and then move on if it's actually a fundamental gap, then go back to um, you know the textbooks. Even if it's an easy topic, which you might think is rudimentary, go back to the textbooks, learn it the proper way. Don't take any shortcuts when relearning the material, so this way you will be solid for future questions that might have seemed uh, trivial at first, but now you never miss them. Alright, so that's all I have for you guys. If you guys enjoyed that video, be sure to check out the two videos I have linked down in the description, and hopefully uh, you have learned something today. So yeah, thanks for watching.